There are currently eight planets in the solar system. The rocky terrestrial inner planets and the gas giants and ice giants that make up the outer planets. Have you ever wondered how the planets were created and why they look so different? To find out, we must first go back to the formation of the solar system, to a time even before our sun was born. This is a molecular cloud, a cold and dense collection of gas and dust floating in space. It is a birthplace for stars such as our sun. Due to higher density in this region of space, the gas and dust slowly contract due to their mutual gravitational attraction. Such a collapse can be triggered by many events, for example, an explosion from a nearby star. As the gas cloud contracts and falls inwards towards the centre, it heats up and starts spinning faster and faster. Over time, the gas cloud flattens into a thin disk with a high density of compressed matter concentrated in the centre. A protostar forms at the centre of this disk, which will eventually become our Sun, while the seeds of the planets, called planetesimals, start to form in the disk. The gas cloud consists of many microscopic dust particles. Over time, they collide and stick together due to mutual gravitational attraction. They become larger and heavier, attracting more and more particles. This process is known as accretion. Over time, these clumps grow large enough to become planetesimals and eventually planets. Near the centre of the spinning disk, the gas cloud spins faster, causing the region to become hotter. Here, it is too hot for substances with low melting points such as water and methane to form solid ice, so the terrestrial planets that form near the Sun are smaller and denser and are mainly made of metals and rocks instead. Due to their smaller masses, they gravitationally attract less gas and hence form thinner atmospheres. Further away from the protostar, the temperature is cool enough for ice crystals to form. These ice crystals are more abundant, thus the planetesimals can grow massive enough for the gravity to attract large amounts of gases such as hydrogen and helium, forming a thick atmosphere. As a result, the gas giants are larger than terrestrial planets. Meanwhile, as the protostar contracts due to gravity, its temperature and pressure increases until a point where hydrogen can start fusing to become helium. This process is known as nuclear fusion, which releases large amounts of heat and light. The protostar has evolved into the sun. Radiation from the sun starts to push the lighter gases, such as hydrogen and helium, out of the solar system. According to current planetary models, Neptune and Uranus formed after most of the gas in the solar system is gone. As a result, they are mainly composed of heavier elements such as oxygen, carbon and nitrogen. Neptune and Uranus are also thought to have formed nearer to the Sun in the order of Neptune and Uranus. Eventually, the combined gravitational influence of Jupiter and Saturn pushed Neptune and Uranus further out into their orbits. This caused gravitational disturbances that flung much debris into the inner solar system, resulting in the Late Heavy Bombardment. The Late Heavy Bombardment is a period in the solar system's history where the inner planet suffered a lot of asteroid impacts. As Uranus and Neptune were pushed farther away from the Sun, they entered a region of dense rocky debris left over from the early formation of the solar system. Their gravity ended up flinging most of the debris out of the solar system or into large inclined orbits around the Sun, forming the odd cloud we know today. This also accounts for why the ring of debris surrounding the solar system today, known as the Kuiper Belt, contains less material than expected. Throughout the past 4.6 billion years, our solar system has changed a lot, and we can expect it to continue changing in the future. So the next time you look up at the planets, take a moment to appreciate the long process that went into its making.